In 1938, Max Noach, a 19-year-old man, was sent as part of a group to the village of Derip to do some land surveying work. The man in charge was Kis Rukavin, a tall, handsome man with a commanding voice and a commanding presence. Uh, I was working in making maps from air photographs. Was a young boy came in uh, to uh, work there, and so I came to know him. In the fall of that year, the first anti-Jewish measures began. And the case got papers he had to fill out if there were any Jews between the people who worked under them. Soon afterwards, all the Jewish government employees were dismissed, including Max Noah. The situation quickly worsened. Jews had to start wearing the yellow star. That same summer, Max received a letter from Kis Rukovin. He wrote, If you ever may run in troubles this way, I can tell you we'll be glad to have you as a refugee. Almost a year later, the situation for the Jews became impossible. I wrote to Kees, and his answer was, but my, my offer is still valid. As all the Jews had a big J stamped on their cards, Max sought out a false identification card. I had a good friend. His name was Fritz Kohl. I told him I need an identity card. He says, here, you have it. With Max now known as Fritz Kohl, he took off his yellow star and boarded a train for Limburg province to seek refuge in the home of Kiss and Henschrugovin. Kiss and Hench understood the gravity and extreme risk that they willingly took. The penalty for hiding a Jew in Holland was death for the entire family. We risked not only our lives, the lives of the kids too. It but you see, you, you, could not, you could not let that boy yeah. go without trying your best. Kiss and Hench were undeterred. They simply came up with ingenious and elaborate precautions for hiding Max and avoiding his detection. Max was even hidden from little Juiced. My parents overheard me early in the morning on the street to my friends. My father, my mother and Uncle Fritz are still asleep. So then uh, Uncle Fritz came and said goodbye to me and he disappeared out of the front door entered the house in the rear and lived with us in that same house for two years and I did not know. The hiding place in the house was on the attic. There was a chimney that was going up. That is the, the chimney that goes through and I understand in behind there that made a fake chimney and that's where Max was hidden in that same chimney. In the attic, Max kept himself busy drawing, studying mathematics, or peeling potatoes for the household. I have been asked, how could you stand it? Uh, I suppressed my thoughts. The fear I suppressed. The strain of living in those terribly dangerous conditions soon took its toll. In spite of Max's best efforts to stay healthy, by the end of 1942, his condition worsened. In the spring of 1944, it was decided that Max should move to a place where the conditions would be better for his health. It was then that Max was brought to his next hiding place, the home of Klaus and Buk Ferenga, who lived in the neighboring town of Cedric. I had seven sisters, and my parents looked after two more daughters from my father's sister. I stayed with the Ferengas, who more or less adopted me. This was all those children and the big shortage of food. And our kids used to fight over who, who would clear, clear off the, the platter from the crumb, the crumbs off the platter. But they said, yes, seven can eat, eight can eat. We managed, but I think several ten thousands of Dutch people died from hunger. Finally, on the evening of Monday, May 7th, 1945, word came that the Germans surrendered. I went back to the Ferengras. I told them my real name. And uh, so we were pretty happy. 
you know, to know that my grandparents did that, there was little food, the sacrifice, um, whether I could do it myself. I don't know. I, I'm in awe. My father was always a man to look up to. He was uh, fighting for the, for, the, for the little man, for the for, uh, justice. I think the Ferienkrauts and the Hochefeins were remarkable people and amazed by their humanity, their courage. It makes me very proud to know that, that my family placed the importance of others before themselves. I ask any of you or any of the people who will be sitting in that meeting, would you sacrifice your children for me? I don't know what they did, why they did it. But it's a very good people.